Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We're so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's Word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's Word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time here to unpack what it says, to talk about our sermon series or whatever season that we're in at the church, and just um, and invite you guys into the conversation. Today, we have the regular crew, so to speak. We got Pastor Mike McKay. Hey, great to be here. We got Justin McKay. Eldery. I'm happy to be here as well. Awesome. And for those of you listening, I know you can't see us. We have a little bit uh, different of a footprint uh, in our studio space today. So if you hear some creaking or chairs rustling, something like that, <laughs> then don't be alarmed. It's not my stomach. It's maybe someone else's stomach, <laughs> but we are, uh, we're taking a little break from our Lamentation series. You guys listening to us at home, you know that uh, we've been in a really powerful Lamentation series the last couple weeks. We're going to continue it leading up to Easter, but every year we take a little diversion from wherever we're at and we focus exclusively on missions. We are a church that supports different missionaries. We've sent out people um, from our own communities who are full-time missionaries, either abroad or at different states, but then... Our church hosts and leads missionaries throughout the year uh, regularly, and that's just a high value for us. And uh, Mike and Justin, you guys know that we were looking at the passage, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 2, which reads, For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And the theme for the Missions Week is just Jesus basically boiling down to the essence of the gospel. And so I would just, so today we're just going to talk kind of about missions, that value for neighborhood church, but also what is the essence of the gospel? Because sometimes if you, for longtime believers, it's like, hey, what's the gospel message? Really quick. (laughs) And we might pontificate. Mike and Justin were talking about N.T. Wright and John Piper, you know, and like, okay, where do they meet or not meet, you know? And so, but yeah, I'd just love to hear from you guys, your thoughts. How was Mission Week for you guys at Cyprus? Justin, I know you were traveling. I was in Vegas. I don't know. (laughs) Doing a mission. I was definitely on a mission field. (laughs) Wow. So... (laughs) You might want to unpack that one. I was, at, I was at a soccer field. There you go. So, Thank but, you. Uh, His Thank son you. was but, at a soccer tournament yes, that Justin yes, was taking yeah. to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, it was a great time. We uh, interviewed a number of our um, mission partners that we partner with and the way of supporting and involved in that way and just heard their story, some how they got involved, how they're transitioning in different life transitions and, yeah. and how they seek to bring Jesus wherever they're at and whether it's the college campus uh, through Holly and Mel- Matt Melton, who deal with crew, to uh, uh, Dave Everett, who's come from many years in Cambodia, to now looking into Turkey and praying yeah. through that, and the Shooks, uh, who uh, are were on the mission field in Mongolia, and then were in uh, North Korea, not in there, but doing ministry yeah. in there, and or two. to there. Yeah. Yeah. And then God transitioning back here to be involved in uh, immigrants yeah. and uh, and refugees that have come from other countries, and um, so there's there's a lot of interaction yeah, with that and fascinating and stories. with yeah. with the challenge of hey, you know God can use you because yeah. it's they're, what they're talking about is just Jesus. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're talking about Him and and w- what He came on earth to do and what He came on earth to be and. And and all, all that relates to him and all of that and uh, and you can do that too. And as a matter of yeah. fact, God's call on all of us is to do that. You know, yeah. in Acts one eight, you will be my witnesses in both mm-hmm. Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. It's just the the um, opportunity to tell people about your story, how you came to faith, grew in faith. And how faith is working for you now, yeah. you know, and those kind of things. It's yeah. it's amazing. Just ordinary people doing, and that was the idea. It was ordinary people doing doing the extraordinary. And I and I like that. And that's something that I was trying to focus on, and and that I got a lot of feedback at just chatting with some of the folks from Los Al. They, they were so refreshed, and and they love you know the sermon series and everything that we build mm-hmm. here is great. But it's nice to just hear kind of these are regular contemporary stories mm-hmm. of just. I'm sharing my life. Some of it is extraordinary of like, whoa, you're in what country or you're like doing what now? Yeah, tell about the the person who does the music um, for opportunities, you know, and helps people with that at the the Los Al campus. 
Oh, go oh, ahead. Yeah. yeah, so we have a gal, uh, Jane uh, Laramore, and, and Micah is her husband, and they have a background. Um, she, it's funny, she actually asked me not to mention the country that they work in, uh, just for future things, but um, uh, she has done some missionary work um, uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere, I guess I can be general <laughs> in that, you know, um, and uh, she brought in, uh, she's a, a music ethnologist. Ethnomusicologist. Ethnomusicologist, <laughs> I had reversed. Yeah. Um, and so, and kind of her angle is um, is that she uses uh, kind of the indigenous instruments, traditions, language of whatever country she might be in, and then um, uh, kind of recontextualize is maybe, I don't know, it's kind of a charged word, but basically take the gospel and merge it into kind of what is already happening at that location culturally. And so it's not kind of like, hey, I'm coming in to for lack of a better term, whitewash this, you know, kind of like, hey, I'm going to import Western sentiments on you to then now you have to do this in order to understand the gospel. It's kind of like, what is the Holy Spirit doing here and now? How are people longing and searching for God? Because as we read again in Acts, you know, I mean, stinking Acts 7, 8, 9, you know, like, hey, the Holy Spirit's breaking out where it shouldn't break out, you know, right, like, right, yeah. you know, what, what's going on? To be even in our modern day to find those places and then to see, okay, how do we use this language or this instrument to worship the living God, and mm-hmm. then um, and then show them that this is the gospel message. Here's the specific gospel message, and um, and then you see the connections that are made. So at Los Al, and we'll in the show notes, we'll have a, a link to our service. She actually show, uh, played some of these in- instruments, mm-hmm. sang in this language, and it was it was this region in the Eastern Hemisphere that I had never heard of <laughs> before, and I was like, oh, you know, and I'm one of those nerds that I like maps, you know, even as in high school, I was like, I'm going to yeah. draw a map. So, but it was like, what country is this, <laughs> and where is it? So, yeah. it was just fascinating. I mean, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's great, yeah. Um, and that's, I think... We think that idea of that might sound strange to us when we see it from another culture, but we do it all the time. I mean, all our hymnody, it might be 500 years old or 400 yeah. years old, but that's what was done. It was taking the truths of the gospel and putting it into the contemporary music, and yeah. that's what we do today. And, you know, even when, when people get uptight about Tomlin messing with one of their hymns, he's doing that today as well. You know, like yeah, those are yeah. the kinds of things. <laughs> what that, was it? What was that's it? Uh, one of the a mighty fortress is written to a bar tune. Yes, uh, and that's a yeah. Mighty fortress, fortress is, is our God. God. You know, I, I wish I would like you know. You see that? Uh, you know, yeah, 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 back yeah. and forth, swinging around. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, no, that's yeah. Well, and that and that relates a lot to Paul's in in First Corinthians. If you go down to First Corinthians nine, uh, chapter. Chapter 9, verses 19 to to 20, he says, you know, for though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. Winning means to share them with the truth of Jesus, the gospel message, gospel meaning good news of what Christ has done. To the Jew who became a Jew in order to win the Jews, to the those under the law I became as one under the law, though I did not myself under the law, that I might win those who are under the law and those outside the law, verse twenty-one, and all, all so forth and so on. That he's he's saying I I've really contextualized, yeah. not changed the words of the gospel, the story, but totally. actually, how it's being brought out, and whether it's being brought out with music or with contemporary music or yeah. some other things that have been brought out, so that we can help people understand that. And and it's the same thing with different languages. You know, you yeah. use different images and word pictures and understanding. You know, uh, of that. And and even as a church, we as a church are wanting to be more missional yeah more uh looking outwardly to be able to communicate the greatness of christ and all that is involved in the gospel to our world in a way that they can hear it and understand it and yeah. that's different in every culture and, totally well and i'm curious for neighborhood church how do we discern how do the pastors and elders how do we decide where we're going on missions because i think last summer we had uh, Mike and Justin. You guys went to Greece. We had a team go to Cuba, which mm-hmm. to me I was like, "Wow, that's cool! <laughs> like that's one of those places that you wouldn't consider right off the bat." Um, and then there was another trip. Uh, was there an India trip? Yeah, was- we, uh, there, there, there is a Last potential year. of one this year. Oh, okay. and, um, I don't think there any one from our church is going, but we we definitely promoted it. The main thing is we don't do missions for us. We do missions to serve. Yeah. And so um, so some of that is a – it's oftentimes – ideally, it is a response to 
um, a need that our missionaries have. Like we mm-hmm. want to go to support them. Now Greece was different, but we do have a missionaries, the Shooks. We had people who were, you know, willing and ready to go do something. And yeah. so the Shooks work with refugees both locally and globally. And so we were almost kind of partnering with them in a sense of they're saying, hey, there's this organization we want to check out and we're going here. Do you guys want to go there? And we yeah. can compare notes and see if we like them. And we said, yeah, let's try it. You know, so, so well, some of that did tr- form into a two partnership because yeah, my daughter is going to go spend six weeks with that organization. This summer. Yeah. 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 Which yeah is so, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and she was on that trip. Yeah. yeah. She was on, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so I think that's, that's a lot of it is it's not, Hey, what's exotic. Cause some of them are actually quite unpleasant, but we go there with the understanding of we are going there to serve the missionaries. So we try to go without an agenda, but we also, the reason we go with the missionaries is they know what's happening so that we can actually be helpful. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've read books and I don't know that we've experienced it, but they're probably polite and wouldn't tell us. Maybe we have, <laughs> but I read books about like uh, someone saying, okay, we want to serve you guys. So they're like, okay. And they're like, no, we really do. And they're like, okay, well then, can you tear down this building that the missionaries built last summer? Because we didn't need that. They Jeez. just wanted to come build something. Yeah. <laughs> and so we said, sure. You know, they were good. They yeah. were because they were polite. So we want to avoid that. We, yeah. we we try to be like genuinely. We want to serve you. So with that, it helps to have someone on the ground in the place yeah. saying this is what will help them. So that's um, huge. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything else to that. Um, no, there's. I mean, it, it's the the idea we come. We want to come alongside. Yeah. Missionaries and, and usually every short term trip is established with some long-term something that's going to happen on there. Even when we went to Greece, we partnered with All, All for Aid. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the organization yeah. that uh, the yeah. Shooks were involved in. Nuva. And and we, we were developing relationships with the, some of the leaders there and, yeah. and ha- had some great relationships yeah. where we know that we could go back again mm-hmm. and, and continue those relationships with the staff, but also... You know, some of the refugees. I don't know if they'd be the same, but but it was we were there to support yeah. their need. Yeah, with and, a long term vision. Yeah, with long term vision in mind. And we, it, you know, we don't like go. Oh, look at the map. We want to go to there. <laughs> we're throw darts. You know, but we have there. been to the jungles of Ecuador. We have been. Yeah, yeah. You know, to the places that are places that are uh, exotic in, um, and Africa. India is not a <clears throat> vacation destination, at yeah. least where we go. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's and, an amazing trip, but it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, you yeah. know we're not going to the Galapagos Islands. You know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this yeah, an adventure. It's going into, you know, you yeah. know, or the or the Amazon jungle with the, right. yeah. I mean, it is the Amazon jungle, but it's in Ecuador. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's uh, anyways, but it, it, those are just partnering with the missions groups yeah. that are already there to be able to support and encourage. Yeah. And a lot of times we just serve, we just mm. and do whatever they ask us to do. You know, whether it's yeah. tear down a, a shed or build a new one if they yeah. want that. Yeah, you know, right. or, a need. and we would rather do stuff where we work hand in hand. Yeah, true partnership. Of working together, and that's difficult in our world because Western has usually been into colonizing and um, kind of taking over. This is what you need, you know, and you populate it. Um, and, yeah, and yeah. I've I've had so many missions experiences that have just embarrassed me. I was in Sri Lanka one time uh, doing some pastor training, and the Sri Lankan pastors were there were embarrassed to say this because I was Westerner there. Yeah, um, but they were just talking about how. The mission the Western missionaries came in and said, "Here's how you do evangelism," and because oh, the the group I was with doing the pastor training, they asked, "How's it going?" And they're all like shuffling their feet because they don't want to say because they're, they're very polite. Yeah, I don't want to offend. Yeah, and offend yeah. mostly me. Yeah, because I'm the Westerner. Yeah, I was there and they say basically what they told us doesn't work because that's a Western viewpoint of evangelism. Mm. And so I, it, was, it was really weird experience for me because I ended up I was apologizing for. Mm the western mindset of this is the right way yeah and i said no you use whatever method you want we don't have the the, the right way is what works for you in your context and i yeah. quoted actually that verse yeah, the the the, 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 the first corinthians, corinthians 9 yeah. uh passage and uh say we know what works for you the message the gospel does not change yeah but how it's communicated definitely works through some cultural understanding yeah and things like that you know whether you're going from an honor shame culture uh, to and a collectivistic culture to more of a individual culture and and even in in now in the US there's just many differences between um, uh, age ranges of how they view things mm. so you can like whoa yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> when and actually I don't want to cut you off, Justin. No, I just, I think that was even some of that is in terms of how that plays out in short-term trips is I think interesting. Like we went to 
Lesbos last year in Greece, and it was beautiful. Like it's one of those where you're like, ugh, this doesn't feel like a mission trip. I mean, yeah. we were doing good work during the day, yeah. But um, there was we did eat well. We did eat. <laughs> we ate. We ate like kings on a Taco Bell budget. Like it was amazing. So, um, but um, with that, there's this. We were, and this feels weird for a mission trip, but we're working with a lot of Muslims, and so. Um, we were not supposed to evangelize because we could screw it up. Like we don't know the context well enough, Interesting, you know, so yeah. we could a- answer questions, but we wanted to make sure people could come, they could be served regardless of their faith. And then the idea is that that opens up long-term conversations for the missionary who knows the context, mm. knows the people, mm. knows how to navigate those well, yeah. as opposed to us coming in and kind of being a blunt force object that yeah. is saying something that isn't going to connect with them. Cause not only is it, you know, they're, they're just like there's a bunch of different kinds of Christians. There's a bunch of different kind of Muslims. And so we did some research. We did some learning. We watched some videos on Muslim evangelism, but it was yeah. also like that was to help us be aware, but not to turn into street apologists with Muslims yeah. coming to get some beans, you know? So, um, yeah. and, and that, that, that's just, but that's an interesting concept because I think from a, a Western American perspective, we're like, we want to go. And so what'd you do, mm-hmm. you know? And, and it's, and that's one of the things that's kind of challenging to say, well, we, we, we helped build relationships and we helped extend that ministry. But yeah, on this one, I, did, I, I didn't share Jesus with anyone because it wasn't set up that way. I hand, offered a yeah. cup of cold water in his name. You know, I did yeah. some things, but, yeah. but... Which which did something, you know. Yeah, and, yeah and, absolutely. And, yeah. And, and I think I had a little more conversation. Yeah, you, you did with, have a using, long... using Google Translate, which is just a kick in the pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're talking and it's coming through and it's just amazing. Anyways, yeah, there, it's... Uh, so I had opportunity, like I was sitting down with one guy who was from... Um, Afghanistan, I believe it was, and he was part of the Afghan army that got ousted. Right. Or oh, just recently. You know, either we're yeah. going to shoot you here or you need to leave, you and your whole family. Yeah. And he was traveling there and he spoke some English. Yeah. So we were able to talk and he looked at me point blank and just said, why, are you, why would you guys come here? Yeah. So I can answer that question. Yeah. That's and, awesome. I, and I didn't yeah. go through a plan of salvation with him, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, what the gospel, sure. the full gospel. Yeah. But I did talk about, you know, we... We love God, we love people, and we believe God loves people, and we want to help in any way. And we're here to s- help all for aid mm. in what they're doing to help people like you. Yeah. And so he, that opened up a tremendous amount of yeah. conversation. And Good. Yeah. he even was able to to vent some of his frustration. I mean, he didn't even know me, but he just opened up and just talked about what it's like to be forced out of his home at gunpoint. He had lots of businesses and lots of wow. things there and forced out at gunpoint and just had to travel and, he, you know with his kids yeah and uh and then i talked to another guy from haiti who um who he was petrified and take they can't they flew into turkey and then this island of lesbos is six six miles six miles yeah, from right there they had to cross six miles of water so this guy from haiti was telling me that when we use spoke broken english and french so i mean i can speak uh, a little bit of french we walked yeah, it was hilarious yeah yeah and google yeah. translate <clears throat> but he was just telling me about he and the same kind of thing he just said you know why are you here what do you do and we talked, and, and and he was able to open up and talk about the horror of that six mile boat ride because he can't swim. Jeez, yeah. And I, I kind of looked at him and said, "You live on an island, yeah, in Haiti, and you can't swim." What? You know, yeah. I know. I'm smart. Yeah. I should learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we had a great time, and, and he even had a, his wife had a baby uh, while they were refugees, not in the camp, but they went to a hospital, had the baby. So now they have a brand new newborn wow. in that camp, and just yeah. what that's like in this little baby growing up, and it. Yeah. But it was a, we were used as a um, an opportunity for someone to just to talk to. Mm, mm-hmm. So you know the compassion of Christ was shown through there, and they knew it was from Christ. Yeah, because we could say that. Yes, you know, and yeah, we did, yeah. and we, yeah. we said that, and it was so great conversations. But it was, uh, yeah, you know, it, I I kind of felt tied, like I want to really go through something right now. I said, no, no, they've asked us. To, we can respond to a question. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if that guy would have asked me, "Well, tell me about this Jesus you're talking about," I can, I could launch into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, that didn't. God did not provide that opportunity. Yeah. No. Well, and and I, I know we don't have a ton of time um, uh, 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 left in our uh, message right here uh, for the podcast. But um, to go back to the core message of uh, Missions Week, which is just Jesus, mm-hmm. and the uh, verse that we read about, you know, Paul just came with the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What would you guys say 
is the essential message of the gospel. And I think in, in Something that I struggle with a lot today is, you know, the world, especially here in the West and California, it, we're so oversaturated with blending faith, politics, finances, and all the rest. And so sometimes I feel like, oh, I have to defend not only the gospel, but this, 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 you know, and it's like, it, and I love the passage that you read out of First Corinthians 9. It's like, hey, you know, we, we could, you know, kind of press into a different culture, but at the same time, like the message of the gospel is cross-cultural, it translates. I mean, it's a universal thing, but sometimes it's hard for us, even as long-time believers, to um, put words to it or to uh, or to really explain it in a succinct manner. So, I would love to hear from you guys, maybe a... Um, I think one thing that was helpful for me is that um, the, the gospel, I think sometimes we use it interchangeably with the plan of salvation. And there's huge overlap, mm-hmm. but I think there's a difference in that. So I think mm. the gospel would be that God created us in his image. We fell because of sin. He provided a solution in Jesus that we respond to in faith by repenting, turning from our sins and embracing him. And he's preparing us for a new creation yeah. to live with him. I would say that's kind of the big picture of it. You know, the plan of salvation is within that, you know, kind of, um, the Romans what, Road. <laughs> well, well, yeah, or, or even what he talked about in First Corinthians 15, because um, where it says, I delivered you what I received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, raised the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and then it goes on from there. Like, that's kind of, I think, what we distill down to gospel. So, I, I, I think gospel's good news, and it's yeah, God's yeah, good news yeah. towards us in our despair um, and... I don't know. I don't know how you feel about Mike, that Mike, but you know, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and he wasn't crucified or risen yet. The point, so there's yeah. something that's more than just the Romans road or four spiritual sure. laws. Those are fantastic right. and good tools. I'm not down on them, but yeah. there's more to gospel than just how we get saved. And I right. think that's the only thing sure. I, that I yeah. think there's a distinction on, but yeah. Well, and, it, and it's, it's at, di- at people at a different point in their life. When I first came to a faith, um, I, same thing. I, I learned I was sinful. I needed a savior, and mm-hmm. it's Jesus. That's right. the basic of the gospel message. Yeah. But so I came to a, I came to a place of faith where I got it. I'm sinful. There's no way for me to fix my own sin. That keeps me from really fulfilling my full potential. It keeps yeah. me from having a relationship with God, and it keeps me out of heaven. Yeah, yeah. Not a great place to be. So what do I do to solve that problem? I can on my own. I need a savior. Yeah. That's what Jesus is. He came to this world to show us how to relate to God. He came to this world to then end up on a cross hmm. where all the sin of the world was dumped on him. He paid the ultimate sacrifice by his death, but he didn't stay dead. Hmm. And, and that you know, I don't. That's what I, I like that verse, but I don't like it. It stopped at Christ crucified because he does pick it up yeah. in, in chapter fifteen and talk about the, the resurrection yeah, yeah, yeah. in Corinthians. But it's and he rose from the grave. Yeah, in other words, after three days, he point. came out yeah. saying that he truly is the one who can deal with our sin. And then it comes to a place of belief. So yeah. I understood that. I knew I was sinful. I didn't have any problem with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, I knew my horrible stuff. <laughs> and, and I couldn't excuse away anything. I just was, you know, made mistakes. And yeah. I understood those mistakes separated me from God, not only just because I was born that way, but also, you know, I kind of feel like I add to it yeah. in my life. And I, and I needed to come to a place of belief of that, understanding that that's true, and then that Christ really is my Savior. Yeah. And to put my faith in that reality. Yeah, and even. and when that happened to me, I felt a physical difference. I mean, yeah. like a weight of bricks came off my shoulder, and I knew that. But I didn't know the full gospel then. Mm. I didn't understand about living life God's way. Yeah. I didn't understand about, you know, trying to... Uh, put myself in an environment where the Holy Spirit can grow me and now grow from kind of my inside out yeah, to being taken yeah. on more of the characteristics of God and the, the fruit of the Spirit. And yeah. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Nice. Um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know any of that yet. So, it, And I didn't even know about what it means for Christ to be part of my life, to, where he would be the actual boss Master, Lord, yeah. Leader, highest influence. I didn't know anything about that yeah. until later in life, when I again got messed up <laughs> and started kind of going away, not not God's way for sure. And I knew that again, yeah, and yeah. and God lovingly brought me back from that. And that's where in, in in my salvation story is where really He truly 
became the boss of my life, the Lord of my life. The, yeah. That and though I believe I was saved in that initial decision, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I was really understanding the full gospel when I really made yeah. Him Lord, and every day I'm trying to live out the gospel by growing and knowing and, and, and God stretching me and helping me to be more like Christ yeah. and to look at him and to, to, to live in love like him. Yeah. Amazing guys. So it's not a quick answer. No. Well, it's not like, you know, yeah. you, and I love the four spiritual laws, which is the, which is the track that was used to lead me, lead me to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little way more than that, but yeah. that's a great starting point, you know? And it is. And I think, and, and that's the thing is, is we're called to, you know, have be slow to speak, quick to hear, you know, quick to listen. And, and that's, I think the Holy Spirit clues us into when those guys from Afghanistan or Haiti or, or you know, whomever that in Las Vegas, the person, the dad in the stands that yeah. you're talking to at your son's game, you know, the, the Holy Spirit pricks us in a sense of, oh, he's expressing this, or, or this person is expressing this hurt, and and then those questions and answers can come about that. And I like, Justin, how you kind of phrased it as like, there's kind of a, a gospel short version, which is accessible, universal, but then as you grow, Mike, to your point, you know, as you live life, there's an expansive salvation story. Well, it's a journey. Yeah. It's a faith journey. Yes. Yeah. And that's what it is. And you know, how you jump in is through initial belief. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then and then you move along there because there's a there's a lot of amazing things happen when you come to that yeah. step of true belief. Yeah. You you know, the Holy Spirit comes up right beside you as like a, the greatest life coach ever. Yeah. And the understanding of the word of God just seems to ramp up like crazy. Yeah. And there's a sense of filling in your soul yeah. and a change. And you can see it. You can see the life change right there. Yeah. That's just such a, a good way to put it, to remind us that it is a faith journey. And that's what we read in the Gospels, you know, of Jesus inviting the disciples to a journey. To follow him. Yeah, to on follow this journey. Him. And in, yeah. in, uh, in uh, Ephesians, talks about the... The manner in which you walk, yeah, and those kind of things. That it's a it's a manner in which you live your life. So it's that's like I say, it's it's not to, the gospel is is a whole lot more than yeah, just an initial decision or the initial message. I'm sinful and need a savior, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, but but it's it's there's a lot more to that because Jesus truly is, and I love the just Jesus part. Yeah, G- J- Jesus is the answer to every single life issue, and I can't wait for Easter when we're going to talk more about that. Yeah, um, at, at both Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, yeah. and. It, it's it's Christ and Christ alone. Christ yeah. is his title. It's not his last name. Jesus, <laughs> yeah. the Christ. Yeah. Jesus, who is Christ, yeah, yeah. who is Messiah. He's the answer to all of our issues. No matter yeah. what we face, no matter what we go through, he is the answer. And, and through him, his teachings, his his uh, his uh, life, the, the the empowering of his Holy Spirit in us, we can get through and, and shine in every situation yeah. that there is. It may not... And we may not be be rich or whatever, or may not yeah, be problem yeah. free, but we're going to have that fulfillment and be the people that God wants us to be because of that. And I wonder if you know, I mean, we see in our throughout church history, but also definitely today, where you know it's like, oh, that person was a Christian; they yeah, not aren't anymore, or they don't believe in Christ. You know, we hear these stories. But I almost wonder if, like, we're forgetting that, like, you know, because it's it's easy. I think there's a there was a cultural movement, um, especially the, so the G, the movie The Jesus Revolution mm-hmm. just came out, and I haven't seen it. I hear it's great. I, I really want to see it. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay, yeah, we've been and talking. People tell me you got to go see it. Yeah. So yeah, okay, we'll see. totally. Yeah, I mean, you we know, should go, Sean. Maybe we should, we should go together. Do we'll do a, a mandate? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Mike and I will just get some popcorn and. Um, it, it, it's I, I um, it's funny. I heard a, a pastor preach once, and it's kind of controversial a little bit. But he said um, something about like, and, and he was being a little uh, incendiary. But I, I get the point of his message in retrospect. Um, like the greatest sin that the church ever committed was saying that the only uh, to be a Christian, all you have to do is say a prayer, yeah, or, or something to that effect. And what his point was is that. It, there is, and maybe it's a cultural phenomenon of like, oh, just repeat this rote, uh, literally just read words, and that's the magic, uh, con, you know, like enchantment yeah, to get, yeah, to get you to go to heaven, an incantation, and that's so not the message of the gospel. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, and even uh, you were talking about earlier, you know, just kind of the West, like this is how you do things. We want to do it now. We're going to get it done. It's going to be perfect. Right. And of course. I want to know 
is this where I punch my card to go to hell? Okay, I do that, and then I could do whatever I want for the well, rest of and my I, life. And I think you need to be. We, we again, it is controversial, and there needs yes, to be some questions. Yeah, because you know, I yeah. think there's nothing wrong with telling people, "This is you can't get to heaven without this." Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm in the middle of doing memorial services. Yeah, and so one of the totally. things I'm sharing, hey, do you want a reservation for heaven? Here's how you do this. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah. and understand this. And the people who I'm doing the memorial service for, they had their reservation in heaven. Yeah. If you're curious about that, because you know they're looking at their mortality now yeah. that yeah. at a funeral. <laughs> Here's an opportunity, and and yeah. and I walk through and and give them some materials if they want them yeah. on that. But <clears throat> yeah, it's um, it's a journey. There's a starting point to every journey. Yeah, and uh, you know, and it doesn't always look the same. You know, it's not just woohoo, prayer, prayer, boom, I'm in, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and then live like hell for the now. rest of your life. You know, it's just, <laughs> yeah. it's not it's not like that. It's totally, it's yeah. it's. Uh, because if Christ is really truly come into your life, there's going to be a change because you want to be like Him. Yeah. And so some people, you know, and, and the Lord talks about it. Some people are going to say, "Lord, Lord, I, you know, I prayed the prayer." Totally. And yeah. He's going to go look in the, you know, in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. What's happened when you come to Christ? Your written names are yeah, in yeah. there, and, and you're in there. He's going to, uh, mm, sorry, your yeah. name's not in here. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, I said the prayer. Yeah, I, I, I did. did the, yeah. Because it's a lot more, and that, and that. The church needs to teach that. Yeah, yeah. It's more than just that. It's a, it's a journey that we begin and continue yeah. to move through, and and it's hard to say. You know, that's why there's been some controversy over this um, uh, ad campaign. Uh, um, he he gets us. He gets us. Yes. Yeah. And and saying because it's not the full gospel. It's not the full gospel. And but I think it's a great opportunity for people to go. Hmm. Let me think about Jesus. Totally, yeah. Yeah. And and like and, then, and I always say, that. hey, investigate Jesus. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I mean, the claim of the resurrection is just like, whoa. whoa yeah, are you kidding me? That is big. You know, yeah. it's just like, I mean, how can that even be? It's just totally. outside of our human understanding. Yeah. But it happened. Yeah. And there's a lot of historical fact that points to that. And yeah. it, you know, again, we'll talk about a little bit of that on Easter. But totally. it, but it's yeah, yeah. but it's uh, and that's for a whole other podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's it's uh, for people to investigate Jesus. Look into that yourself. Yeah. And, and you will you will discover some amazing things. I can't tell you how many people I know that you know. So I'm going to investigate Jesus, and mm. they matter of fact, some even went to disprove Jesus. Yeah, and then they came yeah. to faith. Totally. And uh, we know some biggies like that. Josh McDowell is one of those. Yeah, uh, big, uh, Lee Strobel is one of those. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and there's been others. You know, I think some of the ancient fathers were uh, yeah. of, of faith were that. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and so, but it's it's this incredible journey that we start, mm. and it does start with a, an initial decision of faith and sometimes that's that takes a while to get there yeah even that decision you know i mean it was like you know you come I, there's one one uh, when i was a youth pastor this one student you know she was just i'm there i'm almost there mike i'm almost there i just am not quite there and she really had a faith but she didn't want to she knew what it was to to start the journey yeah she knew that yeah. her life would need to make some transitions yeah and so she weighed those out yeah and uh, and i've also and she and she decided to to come to faith and she's a beautiful believer yeah uh in, in christ and then there's others who said nah I'm not into that anymore. I'm not really into that. Yeah. I don't want to give up my life. Yeah. Because there is a point of that. And that's like when I said Jesus became my Lord. Yeah. I gave up my life. Yeah. I said, it's not mine. I am. I will be the best me that I was created to be when I follow Jesus. Yeah. And that's that's the... That's the joy of the gospel is that when you align yourself to Christ's will and way, mm. it's not like you're a robot that gets pro reprogrammed totally. for some nah. of the <laughs> yeah. That was your original design. You know, Psalm yeah. 139 talks about how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. And we're made with a purpose and a plan. Yeah. You know, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11, you know, I know what plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for yeah. prosperity, not for yeah, calamity, yeah. to give you hope in the future. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's that, it's that movement forward that 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 reality that we will become our true self yeah. when we fully embrace the gospel yeah yeah you got me going i mean i could go uh, on for hours yeah. and... well we're, we're already at at time and, and yeah. man dude thank you mike and thank you justin for uh yeah just unpacking this uh next week we'll be back into um uh, our lamentation series Ooh, lamentations three is good <laughs> so just you and it's a plug for next yeah, week it's gonna be yeah good. are you preaching mike yes. here at cypress yeah. awesome yeah so if you guys listening at home definitely uh, come to the cypress campus justin will be back at mm -hmm. um at los al so yeah definitely would love to have you guys there uh thank you for listening listening to our Revive podcast. As always, we love having you guys here with us. Um, a lot of the uh, the verses that we talked about, um, some of the different links, uh, some of the organizations we'll link to in the show notes. You can always find us um, uh, on our website, neighborhoodchurch.com. On the homepage, we list the resources. Also, you can go to neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive to see past week's podcasts along with their show notes. 
You can also find us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram at Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos. We would love to hear from you guys. If you have any questions or comments, if you've been on a mission trip yourself, please let us know about it. We'd love to hear. You can email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. Till next time, we pray that God revives your soul. Thank you.